Greetings! This is Isla Vida and today's video is going to be on wild plants and we're going to be featuring teasel. The information provided in this video is for educational purposes only. I am not responsible for any allergy, illness, or injurious effect that any person or animal may suffer as a result of this information. Do not rely solely on this video in making an identification. The decision to use any plant is your own responsibility. Make sure to identify properly, use the right plant parts, and that includes using it at the right time of the year. Pick from a safe place and use your common sense. Always seek the advice of a health professional when dealing with health issues. This video is not giving any medical advice and no information in this video is intending to diagnose, treat, or make any mentions of items that may cure any diseases. Also, make sure that you keep all plants away from children and pets and note that any plant can be toxic if misused. Please do your research and I do wish you the best. Being outside is one of the great joys of life. Today's video is on teasel. So here's a few pictures before we start looking at the video. And here is just a few notes that we got to talk about before we get started. The genus name, uh, Dipsacus, is derived from the word for thirst for water. And it refers to the cup-like formation made where the leaves merge at the stem. Rainwater often collects in this receptacle. This plant is a biennial. You may see it listed as a perennial but in the eastern mid-Atlantic region, it is a biennial. Uh, this is in the honeysuckle family, and there are some variations on the spellings, which you can check out here. And this plant has prickly stems and leaves, as we shall see, and you may have seen in the previous photos. The plant of the month is teasel, Dipsicus fulanum. It's also known as Fuller's teasel. It's a non-native plant, and it's considered an invasive species in the United States. Thus, there's no issues with overharvesting if one chooses to forage for it. Teasel is an herbaceous biennial, sometimes a perennial depending on where you live, and it grows in meadows, fields, and along roadsides. The maximum ben medicinal benefit of the root is obtained by harvesting at the end of the first year or early in the second year before the spiny stalk of lavender flowers appears. It is a rosette in the first year and grows up to 8 feet in the second year. It is claimed that the young leaves of the first year plant are edible, but one needs to be careful as the plant has thorny spines. I have never eaten this plant and its edibility is disputed. Modern herbalists, like Matthew Wood, are looking at this plant as a possible treatment for Lyme disease and for its other antibiotic uh, purposes. If you want to check that out, you can sign up for my newsletter. This information is provided there. We're going to go through and look at some videos and some of the photos that I have of this plant. Also, this information is for educational purposes only. Please do your own research and do not eat or use any wild plants based solely on this information or on any one source. These are the photos from my newsletter. Again, if you want to sign up for the newsletter, you can sign up at my website, which is www.iloveiodine.com. It's a free newsletter. It includes information on parasites and how to deal with those and also features a plant of the month that is somehow related to parasites or other types of infections. All right, so let's get started and check out some videos. Greetings and welcome. This is Tanya at Isle of Iodine. Today I'm out for a little evening walk and I'm going to show you the teasel plant. We're gonna look at a first year and a second year. So here we go. This is the first year. So we see that it forms in a basal rosette and a characteristics about teasel, for one, the, the leaves are very, look at the, the way the vein structure is, very unique. And on the underside of the leaves, you can see all of those spikes. See those? All right. So that's teasel first year. Now, there has been some research showing that teasel root has been showing effectiveness against treating Lyme disease. If you're going to be using the roots, you'd be wanting to using it now or into the late fall. Because when we go to the second year plant, we're going to see that it grows into a central stock and all of the roots energy is going to go up into the flower and into making the seeds to carry on the reproductive cycle. So again, this is when you would want to be looking for the teasel if you were going to harvest the roots. So let's keep going and we'll go find ourselves a second year. We didn't have to go too far. Here's actually a second uh, year. It's already gone. It's, it's, you know, past its prime times, the nth degree. But this is what you'll want to be looking for. And when we look at some of the pictures that I have that are in the newsletter, and I'll also include them at the end of this video, we'll see what it looks like when it's in its prime. Here we see a very tall second year teasel. Try to see some of the characteristics. 
again, this is past its flight. Ooh, that was a grasshopper or something. Well, sorry about that grasshopper. And um, anyway, we see the very sharp spikes. They call this teasel because they used to use it according to legend, I guess, to um, tease out maybe sheep's hair, something like that. Anyway, it can get to be very, very tall and has a very thick stock there. We'll go over some of the characteristics when the latter part of this video, just so you can identify it. And the flowers, when it does happen, they have these little purple ones. We'll see some pictures of those because we will not find any today. But what we did find today is the root that you would want to harvest from the first year plant. And this would be about the time. So when you're looking for that, you'd want to be looking for the second year because then that will help you make a positive identification. If you find a plant that you think is a teasel and has, you know, what you believe to be, and you're not seeing any of these nearby, maybe you're not looking at a teasel. Here is another specimen of the teasel, of course. It is a uh, third week of September and it is done for the season, but at least you get to know what it looks like. Plus, if you know your area and you see this, then you know next year what's going to be growing around your area. Also, we're kind of in a, a damp area. We see all the cattails growing, a lot of jewelweed through here. There's a little bit of bone set, uh, some Canada thistle. We're not going to be getting too close to any of those. Just an idea of what you're going to see growing in the same habitat. We see all the jewelweed there, the spotted touch me not. Of course, we have some goldenrod here as well. And look at all of that teasel. Wow, that is a lot. All right, well, let's get on to the next phase of it. Thanks so much, and as promised, here's some additional pictures of teasel. So there's my hand to give a kind of a size thing, but I think you may have figured that out from the video that we saw. I really like this plant. So here we see some of the first year plants. So hopefully you have teasel growing where you live and then you can go and check it out. As we see here, we see it shooting up its stock here. This will be early in the second year. And over here on the right, we see it, some wild lettuce intermingling through here growing in. I like wild lettuce. There's so many different varieties of wild lettuce around where I live. All right, so here's teasel in July. We see that we have the little lavender flowers. Very, very beautiful. And we see the spiny stalks very the leaves have a lot of structure to them and here we see teasel in august as we see over here it's getting ready to go and in some locations it had already actually gone to um, where it's getting ready to go to seed these were taken in two different parts of western maryland and here we have it going to seed Anyway, that concludes the video. I hope you learned a little bit about Teasel. And if you'd like to support my work, you can sign up and become a patron on Patreon. But I would just really appreciate it if you subscribe to my channel. Leave a comment. You can leave a like if you'd like. You can feel free to share my videos as well. And I just want to thank you very, very much. Also, please go to my website at www.iloveiodine.com. And you can sign up for my free monthly newsletter that I feature a plant of the month. And I do provide information on intestinal parasites and other types of parasites that we all need to know about because most people are infected and don't know. Anyway, peace and love. I am out.